I did some work with a uh, industrial company recently, and uh, they are in the testing space. And one of the things that they wanted to do was narrow the window for maintenance. Right, so you have these big industrial machines. Uh, and you have these factors of production quality, labor, and inventory. And if you take a machine down for too long or at the wrong time, it interrupts the production line and you don't get as much stuff out the back. Or you interrupt it at a time uh, and, and introduce a new variable and you bring down the quality. You also have to think about who can repair the machine and when are they available. There's all this stuff that has to happen. And of course, the answer to all of that is that we're going to use AI to figure out that complex coordination of all of these resources, right? And typically today, most companies, and they still do this, have an, a guy with a clipboard, and sometimes maybe a manual tester, walk out to a machine and see how it's doing, right? They have these things called walking paths, and they literally, and this is knowledge transfer from one generation to the next, they go, we're gonna walk around to the machine. Okay, let's see how we're doing over here. We take some notes and get some feedback. We go, oh, there's feedback in that one. Um, and, and then we take those paper notes uh, and we go upload them someplace. Uh, and maybe, if you're really sophisticated, you use your iPad uh, or a mobile device and you upload it in real time. And maybe you do something where you analyze that information and you say, well, there's something that we got to go fix on that machine. Most machines today are still on scheduled maintenance, right? So you get a manual, and the manual says, every six months, do this thing. And every six months, you do that thing. And again, that's a little easier to schedule. You can go, okay, we're gonna go on Saturday morning, we're gonna, it's downtime, we're gonna fix that. But what we're finding is that machines live in the real world, We've kind of always known that. And the AI people and the IoT people are going, let's just outfit them all with sensors. Right, let's put all these sensors on this machine. Sound, vibration, stress, pressure, level sensors. You know, is it still level on the ground? Smoke and gas sensors in the environment, right? Because you can have all this stuff that happens and what they're finding is that if I take a machine, I go, it should be serviced every six months and I stick it in another environment with higher humidity or different heat signatures, maybe I have to do it every three months. Right? And you think about what your car does, if for most of us now have automobiles that are saying your oil needs to be changed, it's like 34%. It's not every 3,000 miles or whatever your maintenance program is supposed to be. Your car now tells you that you have a percentage less. And that's based on your driving patterns. If you drive hard and fast versus uh, slower and, and less frequently, it's going to change that percentage. And so what we end up with is uh, a lot of sensors with a lot of information. And this is a place where you have to have some knowledge management input because what are those sensors doing? What makes sense? Have you analyzed the situation? Because that guy with the clipboard doesn't know about these sensors, right? These are new. These are being sold by new vendors coming into the space saying, I think we have this idea, right? Sometimes they're not new vendors. They're places like General Electric. But what even General Electric is finding that it's a hard sell because you've got these people who know these machines. They can literally walk up. Anybody uh, watching the, the haunting of uh, uh, Hill House? Everybody's going, no, I'm not watching that. Um, one of the characters can touch stuff and feel things. And that's what industrial uh, test maintenance guys can do. They can just walk up to a machine going, it's vibrating too much. And they can sense that because they've been doing it for 20 years. And now we can put these sensors on that. So there's also this whole transition issue of the, are we going to have displaced workers? Because the guy who senses it can now be replaced by a sensor, right? But that whole knowledge piece of the, what are all these things that we can do, including, as, as I was alluding to earlier, with the walking around, I can now put cameras all around it. I can put water sensors. I can just see the machine. I don't have to go walk up to it.